Welcome to Options 101, Terminology and Basic Concepts, brought to you by TradeRightly.com. Options, and the stock market in general, have their own language. Similar to if we visited a foreign country, we don't have to be fluent in that language, but we do have to know how to read the menu and ask where the bathroom is. This course will introduce you to the terms and concepts you need to understand the Trade Rightly strategy. One word of caution. Try not to get overwhelmed if it seems like too much information. Most of this stuff will end up being background knowledge, things that help you understand the nuances of what the market is doing and why you are choosing to trade a specific position. You can watch the videos in this course again and again until you're comfortable with it. So let's get started. What is an option? An option is the right, not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price, on or before a specific date. There are several elements in there that we'll break down further in a little bit, including what an underlying asset is. Now, each option has a seller and a buyer, and it's important to understand the rights and obligations of both. More on that later. And there are two types of options, calls and puts. Now at the top here, we defined an option as the right to buy or sell an asset, but any single option is the right to either buy or sell, not both. So calls are the right to buy and puts are the right to sell. This is something you just need to memorize, but if you visualize what the words mean, it might help. If I bought a call, I have the right to buy or call the stock from the seller. If I bought a put, I have the right to sell, or literally put the stock on the seller of that option. I know the terminology isn't exactly intuitive, but you'll get used to it. Now, the underlying asset that an option gives us the right to buy or sell is usually referred to simply as the underlying and it exists in different forms. Uh, we're gonna look at three primary underlying types. The first is actual company stock. These options give us the right to buy or sell stock shares of a company like Apple Incorporated, makers of the iPhone, Macintosh computer, and uh, all things technologically cool. The second type is an index. Indices are tracking instruments that follow the composite value of many individual equities. A classic example is the S&P 500, which tracks the value of 500 leading companies in various industries and is often used as a measure of the market as a whole. Uh, Apple is part of the S&P 500, as is ExxonMobil, General Electric, and Coca-Cola. Index options are different than equity options, primarily in that they are cash settled. What this means is that if you have an index call option, which is the right to buy, you can't actually buy shares of an index like you can buy shares of a stock in a company. In the S&P 500, there are actually 500 underlyings. So, uh, you can't actually buy shares uh, of an index like you can buy shares of stock in a company. So basically that means if you use your option on an index, you simply get the cash equivalent of the transaction value in your brokerage account. And the last underlying type we'll look at is the exchange traded fund or ETF, which is a little like a blend between an equity and an index. Most ETFs aim to mirror the performance of an index, like the S&P 500, but they are traded just like stocks in that you can purchase and own shares of the fund, just like you can own shares of Apple stock. The most widely traded ETF that tracks the S&P 500 is the SPDR uh, or SPIDER. Options also exist for futures, currencies, commodities, and other instruments, but they are beyond the scope of this course. And that's it for this episode of Options 101, 
For more information on how you can beat the pants off the market, visit TradeRightly.com.